It has long been thought that the contraction during any given exercise is what gets you to build muscle. In isolation, bringing the insertion point to the origin point while lengthening the antagonist muscle at its maximum points will induce the most muscle damage. Therefore, with proper nutrition and rest, it will induce the most hypertrophy and muscle gain. What if I told you that this is only parts of the equation? I know what you're thinking. The negative, bro. The negative builds more muscle, bro. I know this shit. Well, sure, there is pretty convincing evidence showing that the negative, more properly known as the eccentric portion of a lift, causes more stimulation in the muscle, provided that it's following a contracted state. So it's commonly thought that these things, the concentric portion of a movement followed by a strong contraction and a controlled eccentric is the tried and true formula to exercising efficiently in the gym and building the most muscle. These three things are what you want to focus on with each rep of each exercise, especially for isolation movements. What if I were to tell you there was a fourth aspect, something that is so underutilized, so underused, that I can almost assure you that your favorite Fitzbo hasn't ever even thought of providing it as their advice because it almost sounds nonsensical and counterproductive. And that this fourth aspect of exercising, although controversial and has questionable evidence for its use, is something that I have personally used along with having many of my clients use lately to exponentially increase their gains. And for certain muscles, this technique is far superior to use as compared to focusing on the contraction. Out with it already! Okay, okay, enough with the suspense. This fourth aspect that I'm talking about is stretching. More specifically, weighted stretching or loaded stretching. Focusing on the stretch for certain muscle groups based on their anatomy can be even far more superior than focusing on the contraction. We'll get to how to train these muscles and how to train them properly in a second. But first, let me provide you with some empirical evidence for heavy stretch training for muscle building so you know I'm not just talking out of my ass. And most of this video is going to be referencing one super fascinating study conducted by Jose Antonio in 1993 nowadays commonly referred to as the bird stretch study. This study sought to see the effect of intermittent stretching on muscles. According to the researchers themselves, they were more specifically looking to see uh, any differences in muscle hypertrophy, which is increases in the individual muscle fiber sizes, and less an emphasis on muscle hyperplasia, which is uh, actual added additional muscle fibers. What these researchers found was fascinating and made me completely rethink what I thought I knew about building muscle. I'm going to read the abstract from the study directly from PubMed before I dive into what all of this means. Here it is, straight from the author himself. Weights ranging from 10 to 35% of the bird's mass were attached to the right wing of 26 adult quail, while the left wing served as the intra-animal control. Birds were then killed after 12, 16, 20, 24, and 28 days of stretch, not including rest days. Sadness. Poor birds. For those of you who are curious, they killed these birds so that they could cut into the muscle and study any increases in muscle cross-sectional area. Something that is really hard to measure without actually cutting into the tissue itself. If you're an animal rights activist or a bird lover, I apologize if this study triggered you. But they died for a good cause. My potential new gains. Muscle mass increased 174% after 12 days, 264% after 24 days, and 318% after 28 days. Mean fiber area increased 111% for the 12 day group, 142% for the 16 day group, 75% for the 20 day group, 90% for the 24 day group, and 39% for the 28 day group. Fiber number, increased significantly by 82% only in the 28 day stretch group. The percentage of slow tonic fibers did not change for any of the time points examined. Anyhow, let's dive into what all of this means. It means some pretty amazing shit. All of the birds, regardless of how long they underwent this resistance protocol, saw significant increases in muscle cross-sectional area. Not only did the fiber number increase significantly, but the size of each fiber increased as well. So these birds got pretty damn jerked. Overall muscle mass for the 28 day stretch group increased a whopping 318%. 
What the fuck? That's more gains than any human has ever made in any time ever in history. <laughs> well, I'm trying to really grow my lats, so I guess I should just attach weights to it for 28 days, and Ronnie Coleman in his prime wouldn't have shit on me. This is the secret to getting on the Olympia stage and becoming the greatest bodybuilder of all time. Steroids? Growth hormone? Nah, bruh. I don't need any of that shit. Just give me some goddamn weights and stretch me out, and I'm a fiction to stomp on all of you. I finally found the secret. <laughs> okay, I kid, I kid, of course. So clearly there are a lot of different things to dissect in this study and why back in 1993 when it was published, every single bodybuilder didn't just start attaching weights to their body and walking around with it all day and just deleting their gym memberships. So let's first start with the flaws in this study, which there are many. And some of you probably already have an idea about what I'm about to point out. So first off, birds aren't humans. So right off the bat, we can say that this is a major flaw in this study. Not only are birds a completely different species than us, they're not even mammal. From the research I did, uh, techni technically they're reptiles? <laughs> That's kind of weird and interesting, but whatever. This is a fitness channel and not an animal lovers channel. <laughs> Typically, any kind of animal studies are done on mammals like rats or guinea pigs because their anatomy is much more similar to humans. And we can do crazy shit to them and risk them dying without feeling bad like we would if we experimented it on humans. So any kind of exaggerated ex uh, response in a study like this done on non-mammals needs to be taken into account when examining its validity. Secondly, we can use a little bit of anecdotal evidence from our own lives when examining this. Do you know anyone ever that has tripled the amount of muscle mass that they have in their entire lifetime, much less in 28 freaking days? Uh, I highly doubt it. Third, I don't know about you, but I don't personally know any birds who are professional gangsters and hit the gym. Pretty sure most female birds don't care how jacked your wings are if you're a male bird, probably just how fast you can fly or something like that. But essentially, these birds in the study were undergoing newbie gains. The fourth and final point I'm going to make is that these weights were attached to the wings of the bird. I'm no birdologist. Is that the right word? Uh, Aviaryologist, whatever. But uh, you know, I'm willing to bet, due to the fact that these, the thing that separates birds from other animals is their ability to fly. Wings are probably a huge priority for their body, unlike their legs, especially quail, which this study was done on, who are migratory birds, so they very much rely on their wings to fly. So I think it's safe to say that any kind of hypertrophic or hyperplasic, I don't know if that's those are words, but <laughs> any kind of those effects are going to be severely exaggerated because of the importance that their wings have to their survival. So if we dive into the basis of all resistance training, which is progressive overload, this concept is backed by another concept uh, coined by the National Strength and Conditioning Association as the Stress Fatigue Recovery Adaptation concept. Uh, within the fitness community, it's more commonly known as the Stress Recovery Adaptation Curve or SRA Curve, uh, in which the stress is placed on a particular muscle, the muscle recovers and adapts from the stress, then adapts to the stress by getting bigger and stronger. Essentially, building muscle is a survival response the body has to its outside environment. So that's why we can see a bigger absolute gain in muscle for us humans in big muscle groups like the glutes or the quads, rather than like the biceps, for example, which wouldn't have benefited our ancestors more when running away from lions all day. Having guns hugging the sleeves ain't gonna help you survive better in the wild like having some, some big, juicy, strong, thick legs would. Similarly, with birds, I think it's a safe bet to say that the wings and all the muscles associated with flight is the most important part of their skeletal system. Birds need their wings or they're fucked. That's how they don't get eaten. So if a strong outside force is placed upon the most important part of their anatomy, it's safe to assume the amount of muscle hypertrophy is going to be extremely over-exaggerated compared to any other muscle that wouldn't be crucial to the bird's existence. Again, the legs, for example. 
Okay, now, so with all the flaws of the study out of the way, let's dive into what I believe are the good parts and how you can apply some of the findings of the study into your own training. So clearly, muscle hyperplasia is something that can be manipulated. Now, it's relatively unknown and inconsistent in human studies, but it does happen. There is really only one study that I found known as the Tampa study by Dr. Jacob Wilson, in which 24 recreationally trained subjects around 20 years old were randomly assigned to stretching and non-stretching conditions. Both groups performed four sets of 12 rep calf raises on a leg press twice a week for five weeks. The first set was performed at 90% of the subjects 1RM, followed by three sets in which the weight was decreased by 15% of the, uh, of the subjects 1RM per set. The trainees in the stretching group let the weight from the leg press stretch their gastrocnemius, which is the big muscle in your upper calf, in the fully stretched bottom position for 30 seconds between sets. They repeated this process continuously without rest, three times dropping the weight after each set. Meanwhile, the non-stretch participants held the weight stack with their feet neutral and avoided a stretch in between sets. So the thing is with this study, uh, I couldn't find it anywhere on PubMed, and it was posted on T Nation, which has both pretty good and terrible content at the same time, because there's just a whole lot of bro science on there. So it's really hard to tell how much to trust this study. So typically anecdotal evidence and personal experience isn't a good means to justify any kind of claim, but with the absence of empirical data refuting said claim, anecdotal evidence could be legit. There are tons of people who swear by weighted stretching exercises. From the research I've done, big names in fitness such as John Meadows and Christian Thibodeau swear by it. And on Christian's website, he actually cites a guy named Chuck Sipes who used hanging from a chin-up bar with loaded weights as his primary lat builder. Interesting. Other people like Alex from Alpha Destiny swears by weighted stretches for the traps, often citing uh, Strongman as an example. People who don't do a whole lot of shrugging but have are some of the best pullers in the world and often have like these mega traps that makes it look like they have three heads. So here's my opinion. I know at this point it seems like I've completely contradicted myself throughout this video. First claiming loaded stretching to be this unknown secret and then proceeding to shit on it for the lack of legit studies on the topic. But I personally use loaded stretching within my program, but it's not a primary builder for me, and in my opinion, should not be a staple in one's programming. Progressive overload, increasing your body's tolerance to volume over time more than anything, is responsible for getting bigger and stronger muscles. That being said, from my own personal experience, my traps started blowing up a lot more. <sighs> I can't tell from this angle, okay? Usually they look bigger. Anyway, my traps started to grow a lot more when I started doing heavy rack pulls above the knee with a static hold at the top. I'd usually get like super doms the next day. I also started to hold a stretch at the end of each set of incline dumbbell curls, which I usually did at the end of uh, my pull workouts. But I'm pretty positive this is what helped me to lead to uh, bicep tendonitis. I could be wrong, but just proceed with caution. So although I've personally seen some gains from loaded stretching on the last rep of some of my exercises, I think for certain muscles it could lead to potential injury, especially if in that stretch position you're compressing any kind of connected tissue under a heavy load for an extended period of time. In terms of my own programming and programming for some of my clients, I use loaded stretching as a staple for training the traps and I'll often stay in a loaded stretch state after completing pull-ups. I've personally found weighted strategies to be pretty fatiguing, so I'll usually only do one set of a loaded stretch on the last exercise of a certain muscle group, as I find that it hinders my performance for the rest of the workout. I think loaded stretching can benefit all muscle groups, but especially larger muscle groups that aren't super prone to injury. So the traps and the lats, from my experience, can undergo a very heavy amount of loaded stretching in addition to the primary movements. Uh, so muscles like the biceps and hamstrings can benefit a ton as well, but these muscles are some of the most commonly torn, so I proceed with caution on these. According to the Tampa study, which I talked about earlier, the calves have a great response as well, but be careful not to aggravate the Achilles tendon if you're trying to do these. 
I'll emphasize loaded stretching a little bit more on the last week of my mesocycle when I'm approaching an overreach state and on the cusp of a deload. Personally, for my own programming, I like to do low weight, high volume training to squeeze out as much muscle damage and metabolic stress as I can before deloading. The reason for this is you're most injury prone when you're functionally overreached or approaching that state. And because you're more injury prone, I'd exercise with loaded stretching techniques uh, with caution. So here is the final verdict. Loaded stretching doesn't have too much empirical evidence in humans, however, there isn't currently anything really out there showing that it is harmful to your gains or showing that it is complete BS. The fact that the amount of gains the quail saw was so drastic, in my opinion, shows that there is at the very least going to be a little bit of benefit to humans, even if it's minimal. So until a super legit study is conducted on this topic, I wouldn't risk making it a staple in your programming, but hey, if you want to try it out, go ahead and let me know because I'm super curious to see how it goes. I'm just not willing to make it a main staple in my own programming. Um, it's just, it's too risky. Gains is life and I don't want to do anything to risk them, especially because my current programming, I'm making a whole lot of gains right now. It all comes down to risk slash reward for any kind of unorthodox practices within exercise, but especially with weighted stretching. In certain positions, it's quite possible that you're uh, compressing the tendons, causing impingement and injury in the future, but of course, one can counter that by saying that you might also be strengthening the tendons while doing this. I think training the lats and traps with a loaded stretch isn't too risky, while the risk is significantly elevated for muscles like the biceps, definitely the triceps, uh, hamstrings, and the calves because of the tendons that are associated with them. I actually think the quads are a great candidate for heavy stretching because the point where they shorten the most on a leg extension is also where the knees are put at the highest risk of uh, any kind of injury. So stretching them, you're essentially doing the opposite. Uh, glutes, they stretch the most at the bottom of a squat, so I don't think there's much you can do to manipulate a loaded stretch with them. So yeah, the bird stretch study, kind of legit, kind of not. I think the study really helped people think about what they thought they knew about building muscle, at least it did for me. I think it was pretty groundbreaking, but not enough to convince me to make loaded stretching a priority over conventional exercising or even put it at the same level. I'm coming out with another video soon, which I highly suggest you check out. It's gonna be covering hypertrophy versus hyperplasia, where I present some info from the guy from the bird stress study, Jose Antonio, who claims that loaded stretching could possibly lead to muscle hyperplasia, which is very interesting. And I'll be sure to come out with a part two to this video, a loaded stretching video guide to show examples of how to do loaded stretching training properly. Thank you so much for watching, as always. As you can tell, the, these videos take forever to make. Like legit, one of these videos might take 24 hours. I'm trying to get a little bit better at them, a little bit more efficient. I think the more videos that I make, I have more of a process down and everything, but it still takes a while. A lot of research, a lot of filming, a lot of editing, which I have to do after I film this part. So good luck future me. Uh, anyhow, I really just don't ask anything much in return. Only one thing, and I think if you've watched to this point, I think you will be down for it. All I ask is for you to just subscribe. Just hit that subscribe button. Smash the subscribe button. <laughs> and uh, the, there's a little bell button next to it now too, where if you don't hit that, then you won't be notified of, of new videos. So if you enjoy my content, you enjoy how informational it is, I try to keep it entertaining and funny, at least I attempt to make it funny. Who knows whether I actually succeed with that or not. <laughs> That's up to you, the viewer. Uh, so yeah, I put a lot of work into it. So if you could subscribe, hit the bell button, that would be awesome. Because I want to keep making videos like this and uh, I think it's fair to try to be rewarded in a way for making videos. Um, so I think that's fair. If you think that's fair, and more importantly, if you like my content and you want to see something like this in the future, or a video similar to this, not necessarily just all bird stretch study type <laughs> type videos, but just anything related to fitness and uh, things that are relatively unorthodox that a lot of people really just haven't covered or you may not have heard of before, uh, topics which I love exploring and covering and trying out on myself, please hit that subscribe button, smash the bell button, and I will see you next week. 
Have a good one. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.